Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to OzcastNetwork.com for details. Pass over the peewee. <laughs> Good morning, Jeremy. What a voice. <laughs> Pass over the peewee. <laughs> what a voice. <laughs> How are you, my friend? I'm very good, thanks, Jeremy. It's lovely to talk to you again. Yeah, no, it's great to talk with you. I, I tell you what, I found one of your. I don't know whether it was a, a remake or it was um, one of your uh, classic CDs. It was a, 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 a two CD volume called "Bop Till You Drop." Do you remember that? Yes, I do. That was released about 1984, I think. Yeah, I, I love that. I think it's just one of the best pieces of. Uh, Music, you, you, you've nailed it with that one. I hope it was a hit for you. Thanks, I Jeremy. I can't remember, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure it must have been very successful for you. No, it, no, it was, Jeremy. It was, it was it, it heralded our sort of comeback. We dropped out in the 70s for a couple of years and came back in the 80s with that album. And that got up to number two on the uh, Kent Report, uh, just behind Michael Jackson's Thriller. So it was, ah. a, it was a really very important record for us and you're up on the gold coast now or in queensland i believe i well i'm up in the hinterland of noosa oh lovely okay oh that's the sounds, sunshine coast that sounds very nice that sounds retired you haven't retired have you i have at the moment <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> i have yeah we uh we had a break a uh, hiatus and um it's turning into a um it's turning into a bit of a retirement for me but um I'm not too sure, Jeremy. We 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 say we're going to retire, but um, I do miss miss the smell of the the crowd and the roar of the grease paint. Oh God! And you did it so well, and you had no competition either. You you were just fantastic, the Deltones. Uh, but that era, you know, when I cast my mind back to the people who were uh, people like uh, Brian Henderson uh, and all of the people he helped, I, I'm sure, to discover and further their careers. Uh, there were some wonderful days back then. When when was it that the Deltones actually got together? I've lost track of that. Well, I'm not surprised because it was the, it was the summer of 1958 that the band formed. But it was in '59 that we joined um, um, the Bandstand troupe, the the Bandstand family, and mm. uh, did uh, that show for many many years. That went on for 15 years. That show, yeah. but the other show, of course, that caused a sensation was Johnny O'Keefe's Six O'Clock Rock, yes. which he did on a regular basis as well. And Sing, 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 which and came course, along later. Yes, indeed, on Channel Seven. That's yeah. exactly right. And and he that, that was a more a show that was directed more at the um, at an adult audience. Uh, on Sing, Sing, Sing. We were dressed in cardigans and white sneakers, and um, yeah. on um, on Channel Seven's um, Johnny O'Keefe's Sing, Sing, Sing. We were in dinner suits on that show, trying to brush up a bit. <laughs> yes, he liked he liked his uh, talent to dress up. I know he liked them to be very presentable. Yeah, he was. He was. He was a, quite an interesting character. We just sort of the Deltones hung on to Johnny O'Keefe's shirt tails for many, many years before we made a break from him. We were his sort of permanent backup group. Um, and we enjoyed that period. He was a fascinating character. Um, he really, he really lived the rock and roll ethos. He was, uh, he was a rock and roller through and through, born rock and roller. Oh God, yes, yes, and so, so talented. And he died so young. Yes, indeed. He died so young. He was only forty something years old when he died. That's right. As I say, he he really lived the the, the ethos, the rock and roll ethos, and um, he was he was a, a terrific character. And, and, and just fun to be around because you knew there was going to be plenty of action. I and know. it was very, very difficult to get close to, very difficult to get close to. It was, it was, it was a bit of an enigma. Yeah, and, and a fine man, it, a fine man to know. I know that uh, he didn't make a big thing of the things he did to help people, but there was one, one, one story where there was a young guy trying to make his way in the doggy dog business of uh, show business and singing, climb up the slippery pole, and he couldn't afford any nice, presentable clothes, so John went out and bought him a suit. And I don't think he'd ever had a suit. I won't tell you who it was, but he 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 went on to be very successful. And I I hope he remembered those early days when John helped him so much. 
But he did that kind of very yeah. quietly, very quietly behind the scenes, and I'm sure there were other other acts of kindness and generosity that I'd never heard of. I liked him a lot. I thought he was a wonderful guy. Yeah, he was, as I said before, he was very interesting and, and, and good fun to be around. Tell me about the uh, the group now. You, if you Do you make, maintain any contact at all with the other Deltones? Oh, yes, I do. But, um, you know, over the years, uh, Jeremy, the, the band has changed. I mean, we lost Noel Weidelberg back in 19, uh, in uh, 1963 mm-hmm. uh, on, in the car accident, our original lead singer. And uh, he was replaced by a fellow called Cole Lockton, and we, we went on to have a couple of hits with his, probably our biggest hits, Come a Little Bit Closer and, um, and Hang and Five. Yes. La- the last recording of Noel Weidelberg was uh, Get a Little Dirt on Your Hands, which, which went up to number three on the charts. It did very well. But as I was saying, over the years, much has changed. Uh, many members have changed. There's been about 22 Deltones over the many years that we've been together, nearly 60 years. I didn't know that. The band and, uh, has been together. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, there's been many changes. Yeah. I'm the only constant that's been there. I'm the only constant that's been there, but there's been other changes. So a lot of musicians have, have, have raced the Deltones and, um, and worked with us over the years. But the band now is, 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 is back to the original quartet. But we introduced in- instruments into the into the into the group. We were originally a, a, a vocal band, a, a boy band sort of thing. Yeah. And um, in 1983, we changed over to put in, to call brain the instruments in, and then went on to have Bob Tillier drop, which went to, as I said before, went up to number two for us and established the band in a slightly different image with instruments incorporated. But um, the band today is, uh, has um, uh, Merv Dick in it and Woody Finlayson, and um, it's all in the book, uh, Jeremy. Of course, I wrote an autobiography a few years back called Come a Little Bit Closer, Harmony, Discord and the Deltones. And it, uh, it, it does do a, a sort of a... Um, uh, it keeps a record of all the members that have been in the band in and out. Some of them have gone into the Deltones and worked with us for a while and then left and yeah. come who, back in again. Who, uh, so who? It's, it's, it's been quite a fluid situation. But the sound never, never changed. The sound remained the same. No, no, it's a, it's a wonderful sound. Who named you the Deltones, by the way? Well, that was one of the original, the late uh, Warren Lucas named us the Deltones. Some of the groups back in those days, uh, back in the, the late 50s, early 60s, had this Del prefix before the name. It only means the in Spanish, so it's, it's really called the, the Deltones. Um, it, it's, um, it, it just has a ring to it, but um, it, it was a musical name. Of course, everything changed when the Beatles came along and, and all those sort of names like the the, the the Harmony Four and the, and, the, and the New Notes and the Dell Vikings and all those names. <laughs> oh, the Dell uh, Vikings, re- yeah. Referencing music. Yeah. Yeah, the Dell Vikings. Yeah, well, then it all changed then and then, and then the names become quite obscure and sort of um, quite intellectual. Did you, casting your mind back to the early days, did you find it hard to make your way to be as successful as you were? Did you... Did you um, find it easy or was it uh, somebody who helped you or you just got lucky or what happened? Well, all of the above, really, uh, that you mentioned, uh, it, it was more easy than hard. I remember going back when we first kicked off, uh, we hadn't, we only had about four, four or five songs in our repertoire and we burst into into uh, the studio, uh, TUE studio with Bob Rogers. Oh, yes. The Bob and Bob's, I think Bob's still on air, you know, Jeremy. Well, I he was until he, recently. He, he was until recently. Is that right? And he would be 90, uh, I would think. I would think so. Yeah. He was he was he was uh, sitting behind the microphone, and we, because there was no security in those days, so we just waited for the on air switch to go off, the red light to go off, and came into the studio and started to say, "Listen, we're a vocal group, and um, how about um, giving us a chance?" And we launched into a song called "Why" that was done written by Noel Weiderberg, the original lead mm-hmm. vocalist. And uh, he put his hand up and stopped us and got on the phone to Lee Gordon, the promoter, yeah. and said, I've got your vocal group um, here um, uh, to do your backings uh, if you want them for uh, for uh, Tab Hunter, the actor, who yeah. had a few hits out at the time. Young Love. Red Sails and the Sunset. And, yeah, the Young Love. Young Love. Right. You, you've got a good memory, <laughs> too. Well, I think Sonny James um, had the... And, uh, uh, yeah, Sonny James had the American, uh, I think the top-selling version in America, but Tab Hunter was... The most successful with it here. He certainly was, and um, and we went over to Lee Gordon's office, and Johnny O'Keefe was in there, and um, 
he said, are you guys interested in doing some backups for Johnny O'Keefe and for um, Tab Hunter? And, of course, we uh, anonymously, uh, uh, unanimously, I should say, yeah. said, yes, yeah, certainly we are. Uh, we're ready to go. And, and it was that easy. We found ourselves on the big shows uh, with Tab Hunter and Johnny O'Keefe and Cold Joy and all the others on there. So it was a pretty pretty quick start. We got the contract with Channel 9 then for Bandstand, and it happened very fast. Do you remember what your mother and father said when they realised how successful you were? <laughs> well, I know my, my dad. My dad couldn't handle it. He, he was a classical music fan, and, uh, and he just he couldn't handle it at all. And he couldn't handle the, the, the moniker either. Pee wee. You could never understand that. Well, where did but, you get uh, that? You, but, your, but, your name is Ian. Where did you get the pee wee from? Well, it came from the, my surf club background. Oh. Um, everybody knows uh, the, all the ironic names, like the the, 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 the overweight guys were called Slim and the red-headed <laughs> guys were called Blue. <laughs> and, and, you, and, and you're taller than average was called a Peewee. So I got the name Peewee in, in, in amongst our sort of group in the surf club. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you hadn't uh, gone into show business, what would you have done? Had you started to do anything? Look, I was I was an apprentice glazier. I was putting windows in windowless panes and uh, putting pane glass in windows. Well, there you go. That was going to be my uh, my vocation. Well, they lost they but, lost uh, a, a great a great glazier, and we won a, a wonderful talent. <laughs> well, oh, it was such a I dreamed of something was going to save me from working for a living. Uh, <laughs> well, it's and true, isn't it? it. <laughs> it's it absolutely is, true. It is absolutely true. Was John Laws any help to you along the way? Yeah, Johnny was always – well, John was, was also doing bandstand at the time. He was singing at the time. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and, and I think we did a backup, if I remember right, we did a backup for him on one of his records called Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Oh, yes, yes, Spiritual. yes, yes, yes. And um, so John was, John was to- toying between being a radio announcer and, um, and being a pop star. Yes. Um, and, and had a really, really quite a beguiling and, and uh, interesting smile and – well, voice, lovely, lovely, rich voice. Yeah, rich voice. You know the smile. I mean, I was an office boy at 2GB when he was doing the, uh, I think he was doing Drive Time. This would have been in 60, maybe 61, something like that. And uh, he was, um, he just got this really interesting job at Channel 7 called, uh, oh, was it Stairway to the Stars or something? Okay, and he was all dressed up in a dinner suit, and uh, they were making it a lot more sophisticated than uh, he was when he was on bandstand. And they actually taught him, or he told me that they had sent him to smile school because they they thought his smile was crooked, and they had to teach him how to smile. My God, I, I couldn't. Well, he got that down actually. Well, well, I can't. I didn't ever saw anything wrong with his smile, but I, I just, I'm fascinated by somebody who goes to smile school. <laughs> <laughs> God knows. I can't imagine. But we're but we were all told to do that. Oh yes. You know, it's, uh, we, always back tinkering. in those days, you know, we're, before we'd appear. <laughs> always we always to, you know, forget guys, you know. Smile, where, keep smiling. Where can we buy the book, Ian? You can get it off our website, mate, Del dot com. What Del um, it's, it's a, on, on there at the moment. Say it again, you dropped out. It's the address it's, is it's, it's Ian P. Wilson's come a little bit closer. Harmony Discord of the Deltans, and it's on our website. All right. It's wonderful to talk to you. And tonight I'll sit down and play Bop Till You Drop. All of it. All right, Jeremy. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Really nice to talk to you, Pee Wee. Thank you so much. Cheers, Jeremy. Bye. Pee Wee Wilson. Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free, and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details.